Liverpool to take into start. Immobile are heading to Merseyside. Pamacano's future. Spurs enter Aaron's talks and a chance to round up all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Matt Froelich. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. So first up, and apparently Liverpool interested in Inter Milan's Croatian midfielder Marcelo Brozovic. And for just 52 million, which is the release clause, they can sign the midfielder. Now it's clear that he's become one of the best midfielders in his position, certainly in Serie A, and his rise under Antonio Conte has been nothing short of excellent. He has been a mainstay in the centre of midfield, and part of the reason that, well, up until a few weeks before the season was postponed, they were actually challenging for the Serie A title. Now, if you look at it this way, you'd probably think there is no way that Liverpool could sign anyone who's going to make their team even better. Well, Adam Lallana, who's really not part of the first team, is leaving on a free, and Gini Wijnaldum, who definitely is, well, his contract is expiring next summer, and there is currently no new deal on the table. So, along with the fact that James Milner is getting into his mid-30s, maybe, just maybe, Liverpool could actually deal with Brozovic. I mean, actually, at £52 million for release calls, I'm surprised that no other teams are at least being linked with him. Surely to sign a player of that quality in this day and age at 27, so with his prime years literally he's just entering them, that sounds like a pretty good deal. If he were to join, I think Wijnaldum would be the player he'd take the position of. He's not going to be better than Fabinho as a central defensive midfielder. And as a Jordan Henderson, well, he always stays in the team pretty much when he's fit. As he is the captain, he brings what only Jordan Henderson can bring to the team. What exactly that is, we're not quite sure just yet. But on the other hand, yeah, if it's not Wijnaldum, maybe it's Naby Keita. But I really think that Brozovic would be a good addition to Liverpool squad, as I mentioned, especially for that money. But another player who could potentially be heading from Syria to Merseyside, but to the blue half, is Chiro Immobile. Now, the 30-year-old Lazio striker has been on absolute fire, certainly in the last few years, notching up almost 100 Syria goals in the last four seasons alone with the Rome club. So, so much so that there have been quite a few names linked with him, but there always seems to be that one factor that puts a club off signing him. The fact that when he's moved out of Italy, mainly to Sevilla and Dortmund, he's been absolutely rubbish. So maybe, maybe Carlo Ancelotti is willing to give him one last chance outside of his home country and bring him to Everton. Now, if they don't want to pay the reported 50 million for a 30 year old that Lazio are asking for, they are looking at using a make weight in the deal in the form of Moise Keane. Now, they signed him for 30 million from Juventus when, in all honesty, he was looking really, really good. Cristiano Ronaldo went through that spell of being injured towards the end of last season. Moise Keane came in, scored in quite a few games in a row, then got called up to the Italian national squad, then scored for Italy as well and then got sold to Everton. Now, I'm not so sure why Juventus was so keen to get rid of him and to take not necessarily a huge amount of money for someone who could potentially be a superstar. But maybe, just maybe, they knew exactly what was coming. And what was coming has been a very, very poor season for him. Move to Everton has worked out as planned, and even with an Italian manager like Carlo Ancelotti coming in, things still haven't gone so well. So if they give him to Lazio, maybe, just maybe, they'll be tempted to do the deal. Of course, they'll be getting rid of their main striker, their main goal-getter, their main hero. But they'll be getting a striker who has some potential, we have seen it, who's 10 years younger, and they wouldn't actually be paying any sort of money for him. I know it's, it seems unlikely at the moment, but honestly, I think it may, may just be a deal done. Certainly, Moise Keane moving back to Syria and to Lazio is far more likely than Chiro Mobile moving, but you never know what happens. And next up to Dyer Upamecano, the heavy Leipzig centre-back and German legend Lothar Matthäus has said he should only be moving clubs if he is guaranteed first-team football. The 21-year-old Frenchman has been in such fine form this season that the likes of Manchester United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Real Madrid and Barcelona have all been linked with his signature. But Matthias said he could even stay at Leipzig for one or two more years because he is so far ahead of where he should be in his career at such a young age. These are pretty strong words, especially coming from someone as special as Matthias. Or maybe he just wants him to stay in Leipzig so Bayern can go and pinch him in a few years. Anyway, should he actually leave the club, there is one place for me that he'll definitely get first team football and that is at the Emirates under Mikel Arteta. The reason being that, well, Arsenal's defensive issues are there for all to see and it doesn't look like they're going to be getting any better. But... Actually, at the start of next season, should they sign up Meccano and William Saliba is returning on loan, those two could make a pretty good pairing at the back. Put it this way, Pablo Mari is hardly impressed since joining on loan and not so sure whether he'll stay full-time. Rob Holding has looked pretty good when he's come in, but still quite a way off being a top-level centre-back. There's obviously Mustafi, who's become somewhat of an internet meme. David Luiz has had a good season, actually, since signing from Chelsea. There's also Socrates, who's 
doing good in places. And lastly but not least, there's also Mavropanos, who's had quite a good season on loan at Nuremberg. So with all of those options, Arsenal could definitely sell some, get rid of some deadwood, bring in some money, and then afford to pay for Upamecano 50 to 60 million. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Arsenal fans, though, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm impressed I managed to remember all of those defenders. Not like I've been spending a lot of time researching Arsenal's defensive options. And talking of defensive improvements, that is one area where Arsenal's North London rivals Tottenham definitely, definitely need to work on. And apparently, it's going to come in the shape of Max Ahrens, the Norwich City fullback who's had a pretty good first season in the Premier League. He's been in Norwich's first team for two seasons. One of them, helping them come up from the Championship last season. And secondly, helping them try to fight relegation, although not so successfully, in the Premier League. He's done so well at right back in a team which has really struggled defensively that he's even managed to put himself in the shop window for a few clubs. Spurs definitely, definitely need some right back improvements. Last summer, they sold Kieran Trippier. They then went with Serge Aurier for most of the season. He was quite inconsistent. Carl Walker-Peters didn't do so well and he went out on loan to Southampton. And well, Juan Foyth and Jaffet Tanganga both don't look so promising at right back and they're definitely central defenders. So, What's not to like? I mean, if Norwich do get relegated, well, Max Harris could probably be available for 20 to 30 million. Again, it sounds like I'm saying it, oh, just 20 to 30 million. But if you're going to look for a good right back and age 21 could be an unbelievable right back for the next 10 years, well, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Apparently, Spurs have been laying the groundwork with him ever since January, where people at Spurs were calling Max Aaron's camp literally every single day to try and convince him to join the club. Of course, Daniel Farker wants them to remain with the Anglian side so they can try and stay for relegation, but it looks as though whatever the outcome of that particular battle in the summer, Aaron's will be moving on. Alongside this, Spurs will have some money to spend, as apparently they're going to be selling the naming rights to their stadium to Amazon. What on earth is it going to be called? Maybe the Amazon Arena? Amazon Heart Lane? I've no idea, but 250 million is apparently the deal for the next 10 years, so they'll definitely have more than enough money to splash out on a few transfers. One extra bit of news though for Spurs as well is that apparently they're interested in Inter Milan's Diego Godin and after his move from Atletico Madrid to Inter didn't work out so well he could be available on a free transfer but obviously he is a rather experienced shall we say player. But next up to a quick round up of the rest of the day's transfer news Real Madrid have told Eden Militao that he has a future at the club and he won't be leaving. Leverkusen midfielder Charles Aranguis I think I pronounced that right is going to be moving to Bayern Munich on a free transfer at the end of this season. UEFA have proposed a new date for the Champions Champions League final, which is apparently going to be August 29th, with the Europa League final three days earlier. And lastly but not least, it with talks of a takeover for Newcastle United, they apparently are closing in on their first signing. Is it a big money signing with all of their new takeover money? Absolutely not. I think they're going to sign Jeff Hendrick from Burnley on a free transfer. You can figure that one out if you like. So there you have it. That is all from me for today. But what do you guys think? Let me know your comments down below in the comment section. Also, smash the like button, click here or here. And one final request, wash your hands, stay safe and have a great weekend. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys soon.